edition of the Red Storm Report. We're going to start off with the number six, as in sixth man. That's Ryan Williams, and he does not mind coming off the bench. As a matter of fact, it's a job that he loves. No further ado on Ryan Williams. Let's get to him right now in this week's cover story. Johnny's running there at the alley up for the finish. Ryan Williams. Strong rebound pulled down by Ryan Williams. Transfer out of Monroe Community College. He's a junior right here in Queens. Having a nice ball game. The kid is a competitor and spark off the bench. Three quarters into his first season with St. John's, Ryan Williams has found his niche. As the sixth man, the 6'5 swingman infuses the Red Storm with an all-around game that's both substance and style. Ryan Williams replaces Cedric Jackson One only guy. for the Red Storm. I like the role, you know, it's, it's, it's not who starts the game, it's who's finishing the game, you know, and Coach has confidence in me coming in, providing energy off the bench. He's an unbelievable athlete who, uh, who really understands his role and understands when he comes off that bench for us, he's going to give us a strong 20 to 25 minutes. Ryan, during the course of the game, when Ryan's on the bench, you watch him, he's really focused. You know, he'll ask questions. Once Coach Roberts, you know, gives him a nod, he's ready to go, he's prepared, he's focused, and he's concentrating on his job he needs to do. You know, there's no problem with the role. Uh, that's one of the better roles in basketball, you know, that a lot of people make careers off being six man. Six man role is not bad at all, and I'll stay with that. The super sub has come on strong in the second half, increasing his minutes and his production. A number of factors played a role in his upswing. Ryan's gotten better and better every game, and, and the reason why is because his practice habits have gotten better. He's working harder, he's more focused than on what we're doing. He started bringing it more in practice and making you kind of guard him even more, so he's bringing a big spark because teams are starting to worry about him now. In the beginning, you know, my, um, I wasn't really as focused. I had injured my ankle, you know, I was worried about, you know, my son being born. Coach said, we need you to step up more. So I said, you know, I'm, I'm going to play how I know I can play. And I stepped it up in practice and transferred out to the court. 12 points against Boston College on shots like that. He was 6 for 7 from the field. He's done a great job. He's probably one of our most improved guys from day one this year. He's willing to do whatever coach is asking of him, whether it, it means guard the best offensive player that night or go to the offensive glass, dive on the floor, come up with uh, hustle plays. Oh, watch out. He's very uh, athletic. He just needs to shoot for three, so he just very versatile. While Ryan contributes in many ways, his calling card are his crowd-pleasing slams. I've always been a dunker. You know, a lot of people in New York know me as a dunker. Obviously, with his outstanding leap and ability, uh, has really benefited us, especially our guards. And, you know, Eugene and Darrell, I tell them all the time before every game, just put it up there and I'm going to go get it. Lawrence to Williams. That gets the crowd hype, it gets the team hype, it changes the momentum of the game. It's quite possible Williams developed his flair for the air watching his beloved Los Angeles Lakers growing up. It is, it is the Showtime you know, era with Magic and them and Kobe and Shaq and all the times in between. They, they're just an exciting team to watch. And the Lakers are the 2000 NBA champions. You knew that people were scared of those teams, you know? I just, I just like their whole presence on the court. Showtime to Ryan also means Daryl Hill. The two were teammates at Bayside's Cardozo High School and have stayed close to this day. Wherever I'm at in the city or in my neighborhood, he's with me. So I had a feeling that he really going to become St. John's because of me. Back then, it was it was funny because Daryl was the was the little guy. You know, he was he was on the bench, not really playing a lot, and I was out there playing all the minutes when we were in high school. And all of a sudden, he worked real hard on the game. Now the steal. Here's Hill. After Williams got a piece of it, it's good. His hard work has put a little picture in my mind that I can get there too for the same amount of work. That was a good rock and I. And now it's time for the Lincoln Mercury Drive of the Week. Lincoln Mercury, a proud sponsor of St. John's Athletics. Coming up next, we're right back with Norm Roberts in Coach's Corner. You may not be able to tell by looking at them, but St. John's University students are different. They're focused on making a real impact. With New York as their classroom, St. John's students are inspired to create, to explore, and to achieve. At St. John's, higher education is not just about career preparation. 
It's about learning to make a difference in the world. See what a difference a St. John's education can make. Call 1-888-9-ST-JOHN'S or visit stjohns.edu. This is the Toyota Camry. It's the best-selling car in America. You can lease it for $1.99 a month for 36 months with $18.69 due at signing. See? In beautiful black and white. If a down payment doesn't work for you, you can lease a Camry for $2.49 a month. An extra 50 bucks a month, but you drive away paying nothing except the first month's payment. That's it. You want one? See your Toyota dealer. The Camry, one of 17 Toyotas moving you forward. Introducing the all-new compact Mercury Mariner with intelligent four-wheel drive and V6 power. Mariner is everything you want in an SUV, only condensed. The smartly equipped Mercury Mariner starts at an introductory price under $22,000. Welcome back to the Red Storm Report. Time now for our weekly visit with head coach Norm Roberts. Coach, Always good to see you. Now, just to let our viewers in on something, we taped this show on Thursday, so I'm speaking to you less than 24 hours after what had to be one of the most heartbreaking losses of the year, last night's game against West Virginia. Well, it was, it was a tough game. Our team, uh, we didn't start off the game well. We didn't, we didn't uh, play with the type of energy we needed to early, and uh, they got out to a lead on us, and I think they got up by as much as 14 points. And, and then we really battled back and we're down about four at halftime and then the second half we really battled all the way through and had a lead of about six points at one time and they came back on us and uh, Dow Hill makes a great play makes a great shot with about nine seconds left on the baseline gets fouled goes to the free throw line uh, misses the free throw and then they come down the court and their little point guard kind of weaved through everybody and Instead of us being more aggressive defensively and keeping them out of lane, I think we were afraid to foul, which most teams are at that time, and he drove into the basket and uh, put up a layup and, and made it and beat us. Hill hits that shot, big shot, puts you up by one. Even after he misses the free throw, are you thinking, we got this one, guys? Well, I never thought we had this one, only because they're such a good offensive team, and you know anything can happen. Uh, with nine seconds left, there's so much time. You know that's with nine seconds left, a guy has a chance to dribble a basketball at least eight times. Uh, so anything can happen. You know, you know and so many teams are so creative. Uh, but we had hoped uh, we had hoped Darrell was going to make the free throw. We'd be up two, and we had talked in the huddle about, hey, we're not going to give up a three. We're not going to give up a three. Stay in front of your man, contest, switch on all screens, no matter if it's big or little, but make them have to score over the top of you. And when we missed the uh, free throw, they got kind of an angle, a head of steam up the court, and we were kind of afraid to foul, and they made a great play. And this, of course, comes on the heels of another incredibly tough loss against Seton Hall. Again, Dow Hill making great shots, keeping the team in it, but you get down to the 11th hour, all you got to do is you get the rebound, get it up court, take a shot. You never got a shot off. Was there a case of clock mismanagement? Was the player not aware of what was going on? What, what was the situation there? Well, we knew, we knew that there was uh, four seconds left on the clock. And what we told our guys was, you know, if he misses one or makes one, he, when he made his first one, he missed his second, we told our guys get the rebound as quickly as possible and then push it up the floor. We really wanted Eugene or Dow to have the ball in their hands. And Dow was on the wing in hopes that Eugene could get it and then kick it to him. The shot was missed on the other side of the basket, not, near, not where Darrell was. Uh, Eugene tried to bring it up the floor and then he tried to weave through, but he kind of came up the sideline. And the sideline actually helped guard Eugene. Uh, which you'd rather be in the middle of the floor. And he tried to kick it to Ryan, but there wasn't enough time. 
uh, again, didn't get a shot off. How disappointing was that part of the scenario? Well, uh, not so much disappointing not getting a shot off. You always want to do that, but it's probably more we had no timeout, so you cannot call a timeout then. But probably more disappointing that we gave up an offensive rebound. You know, we, we had played well, we had fought our way back into it, and we gave up an offensive rebound and a putback. But that game, we didn't do a great job rebounding. They had 23 offensive rebounds, and, you know, that was a toughness play that we got kind of out toughed in that situation. Are the losses similar in your mind, or do they both stand out for totally different reasons? No, they're all different reasons. You know, uh, against uh, West Virginia the other night, we turned the ball over way too much early, and we did a much better job of handling the ball late. Uh, I thought we played a good game against West Virginia, a really good game. And uh, against Seton Hall, we got out to a good lead, but then we got in tremendous foul trouble. So we had guys playing out of character more minutes than what they normally would be playing and in different positions. Uh, so that hurt us. But the other thing was the key was rebounding. Uh, you know, Seton Hall killed us on the glass, and uh, we've got to do a much better job of rebounding the ball, which we did against West Virginia. A couple of heartbreaking losses back to back. Four straight losses, only two wins in this calendar year. How do you keep this young team focused? How do you get them to regroup? Well, I just think you got to keep trying to get better every day and understanding why we came up short in those games, be it rebounding, be it uh, turning the ball over, be it not being patient offensively or defensively, and just continue to work on those things. Uh, you know, one of my assistants has a term, it is what it is, it is what it is. And, and this is where we are. We just got to battle back and keep being tough, and then things will fall our way. Are we seeing growing pains? Is this the inexperience of youth that's costing you at the end of some of these games? Uh, I think at times, but, uh, but I don't think so anymore because our guys are experienced. They've been playing. they played in tough games all season. They understand what we got to do at crucial moments and, and those things. But, you know, sometimes the ball bounces your way. Sometimes it doesn't. You know, in the West Virginia game, maybe when they get the rebound, the guy drops up the court, he kicks it off his foot, you know, or he walks. So, you know. All those things could have happened, but they didn't. And, uh, you know, but I know other games, you know, Pittsburgh may be saying, hey, how does Dexter Gray make that layup? You know, and it all goes in. So you never know where the ball's going to bounce. What have been some of the bright spots in this losing streak for you as a coach? Well, the bright spot is that we're playing hard. We come back and we battle every day. Our guys are practicing hard. Our guys are playing unselfishly. Our guys are learning and, and getting better every single day. Ryan Williams has really developed and gotten a lot better. Cedric Jackson is doing better for us offensively. Uh, you know, Lamont Hamilton broke out of a little bit of a slump uh, the other night and had 17 against West Virginia. You know, Phil Mazzieri's given us good minutes. Uh, you know, dow has been you know, consistent all year. So, you know, those are the bright spots. You know, we, we see a lot of growth in our players and those things, but we just got to put things together and, and get a win. Kid like Dexter Gray, not to single him out or anything like that, but he's, big, he's getting more consistent as he gets more minutes. Is he a player you would characterize as ahead of schedule or on schedule in terms of his development? Well, I think he's on schedule. I think, you know, Dexter works hard every day. He's really improved himself as a shooter. He's doing a much better job of rebounding the basketball. Uh, he's done a much better job of moving his feet defensively. And, you know, Dexter's put himself in positions to make great plays for us. And, and he's not afraid to do those things. And I think that's only going to help him in the future. It's rematch time in the Big East in terms of the league schedule. A couple of uh, teams that St. John's has played earlier this year. They get a second shot at them. We'll talk about that with Coach Roberts in the next segment of Coach's Corner right after these messages.
Welcome back to the Red Storm Report as we continue in our Coach's Corner segment with Norm Roberts trying to end that four-game losing streak. Georgetown coming up on Sunday at Madison Square Garden. A couple of players to contend there from the Hoyas, Jeff Green and Brandon Bowman. They gave you fits back on January 25th. How do you plan to reverse the trend? Well, we got to pressure them. We got to pressure them. I mean, we can't let them be comfortable in what they do. Uh, they run offense very similar to West Virginia, but the thing with them that's different from West Virginia is that they're so athletic. They can create offense without running their scheme or, or their strategy, and, and uh, so they can make tough shots, and they're very good at attacking the basket with Bowman. And Jeff Green, he, he's, he's by far the best rookie in our conference. He, he's a tremendous player. He can shoot the three. He can take you to the hole. He can, he can back you down. He can post up, and he's a great passer. So it's going to be a big, big challenge for us. Also facing Syracuse at the Dome. Talk about how tough it is to play in that building. Well, it's, it's, it'd be the first time I've ever been there playing, and, and uh, I heard it's a, it's a tough place. You know, you can get 30,000 people in there at one time and, and everything. But we're just going to have to go and try to play within character and play tough. that win total. Time now to take a closer look at the women in our spotlight. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Before she got to St. John's, they were 3-24. and 24. And look at the progression. More wins every year. They are already assured this year of finishing 500 or better for the first time in 10 years. Just as Norm Roberts has rejuvenated the men's program, Kim Barnes Arico has done an enormous job with the women's squad. After steady improvement her first two years, Kim led the Red Storm to 11 straight wins to open the season. Good job with Notre Dame, crossing them up. You need to know your personnel and you need to know your rotation. We're starting to turn the program around and we're headed in the right direction and I want to make the university proud and the former alumni proud because I think this is a special place. She has changed the culture of the whole program. She said her players no longer expect to lose, and that was a big hurdle to get over. I don't think they've won a conference game in like three years. She's managed to change, turn this program around in less than two years. Last year, we had some big conference win, and the first time in uh, several years to get to the Big East tournament. She kind of challenged, challenged me um, on and off the court. I felt like it's been pushing me and pushing me. And then, it's helping to get to my top potential. I get into it. I'm, I'm passionate about basketball, and I'm passionate about our team, and I, and I get excited, and I, and I scream, and I yell. Most times I try to think that it's in a positive way and that it's helping us. I want to get the best out of the young ladies on the floor. Coach Barnes and Rico now has the pieces in place. In her first season with St. John's by way of UConn, sophomore Kia Wright leads the team in several offensive categories. Good size as a power point guard, can score inside, leads them in scoring, and knows how to distribute the basketball to her teammates. Kia is a creator. She creates a lot for this team. I mean, she gets into these small gaps and manages to make great passes. She's a great defender. She's quick. She's very aggressive. We're going to build St. John's basically around her because she's still young and I think that she's a big impact on our team. One of the targets she likes to hit on the inside, Angela Clark, who was her teammate in high school. Angela is, is, a, is a special young lady and a special player. She does some things on the court that people can't believe. She's so quick. She gets around them on offense, on defense. She gets steals, and she boxes out. I think her numbers have decreased a little bit from last year, but I think that's because people are trying to shut her down, and that's opening up. Um, the ability for other people to score. That includes Jersey City's Tara Walker, who averages over 11 points a game, and senior guard Griba Barlow, who's made people notice as a player. Griba Barlow, the senior from Columbia, Maryland's Big East Player of the Week, coming off a 19-point performance in their upset win over Boston College. I felt like uh, I played well, as well as the team. And um, to get the honor, it was, it was great. I think it was unexpected. Reba was unbelievable in that game. She actually, we gave her 
a big assignment in shutting down their one of their best players, Claire Jost. I believe it did a phenomenal job. Claire finished with three points on the night, and I think that helped her offensively because she was in a comfort zone, and she didn't miss hardly a shot on the night. She was 8 for 10 from the floor. Following that confidence-boosting win over BC, the women pleased the home fans with a hard-fought victory over Pittsburgh. With two more games at Karnaseka Arena, there are plenty of reasons to watch this team on the rise. We're a fast-paced team. We have to get the ball out, run at the floor, and uh, pressure teams. I try to get teams frazzled, get them out of what they're used to, and play pretty hard. A hard-working team. Hard to argue with the results that Kim Barnes or Rico has gotten from the St. John's women. They even have a chance of qualifying for this year's NCAA tournament. Next week, make sure you're with us on the Red Storm Report. We'll take a look at St. John's senior forward Phil Masiri. We'll also take a closer look at the baseball and softball programs. And of course, Coach Robbins will be back with us for another edition of Coach's Corner. For all of us at the Red Storm Report, thanks for being with us. We'll see you next week. I'm Bill Daughtry. Welcome to another edition of the Red Storm Report. Coming off the bench, Phil Masiri contributes major minutes. Here's a guy who was, a, you know, a couple of years ago wasn't even on the team, and now has, has actually worked his way into our rotation. And you don't see that many times in, in college basketball, and I think that's a tribute to him. Norm Roberts joins us in Coach's Corner to recap. coming off it. With both the baseball and softball programs coming off impressive 2004 campaigns, expectations are...